Poppin' Twin B, the sixth iteration of the Japanese Twin B game series, was released by Konami in March 1993 for Super Famicom or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This iteration of the QT Top Down Shoot 'em Up was considered to be a sequel to 1991's Detama Twin B and was the first of the series to be released outside of Japan, but only in the PAL region, leaving North America and a few other localities out. <coughs> Though it can still be played on emulators, and that's what I'm doing today, so grab a drink, sit back, Let's talk about Pop and Twinbee. In the game's opening cinematic, we see Twinbee and Winbee patrolling the skies of Donbury Island when they receive a distress call from a girl named Madoka. Her grandfather, the well-known scientist Dr. Mardok, turned evil after a nasty bump on the head and now he wants to take over the world with his Donguri army. Uh, Donguri means acorn, so it's an army of acorn men. And the only people who can turn Dr. Mardok back to the side of good are our heroes, Twinbee and Winbee. It's a rather simple story, I think, but a game like this doesn't really need an elaborate story. Gameplay may seem familiar to you if you're familiar with other games in the Twin B series. It's really meant to be played as a two-player co-op game, and by yourself, it can be surprisingly difficult. Player 1 plays as Twin B in a blue spacecraft, and Player 2 is Win B in a pink spacecraft. I have no friends, so I'll be playing solo as Twin B. You maneuver your spacecraft through seven stages and defeat every enemy who gets in your way with a boss battle at the end of each stage. You can shoot weapons forward at airborne enemies, drop bombs on characters below, some of which can give health, which can be extremely valuable, especially if you're playing by yourself. <laughs> you got this done! Or if you're brave, you can even take part in close range hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's also a burst attack, where many tiny spacecrafts fly around and attack all on-screen enemies. You only get a few of these, so use them wisely. In a two-player game, one player can even give health to another if needed, or even use the other player's ship as a projectile against enemies. The main power-up items, like in other Twin B titles, are bells that emerge when you shoot clouds. When shot, these bells change color, and the power-up changes depending on the color of the bell. You can get points, different, more powerful weapons, burst attack recharges, force fields, or even tiny twin bees that follow you and fire their own weapons, especially useful for playing solo. But when you have a lot of them, they can kind of clutter up the screen. When your health runs out, you, of course, die, you fail the stage, and you're given an opportunity to, quote, keep it up. But you do have a limited number of retries before you have to start the entire game over. When you defeat a boss, he explodes into bells, so you can rack up a few more points or gain power-ups for the next level, and then you're congratulated with a 16-bit anime cartoon. It is a Japanese game, after all. The controls are very responsive and easy to use, the colors are vibrant, animations are crisp and clean, and the characters are very creative, with every enemy having their own unique attacks. But what really drew me to this game was the music. This is probably some of my favorite music from the SNES platform, and I regularly catch myself humming it, or even listening to it in my car. It's just incredible. Take a listen.
This entry of the Twinbee series is said to be very easy compared to its predecessors. In previous entries, like Katana Twinbee, once an enemy hit you, you were dead. But Poppin' Twinbee introduced a health bar, and now getting hit only takes a little bit of health. But I still got my butt whooped. So the verdict is, I love this game. I had never actually played Poppin' Twinbee before, or any Twinbee game until now, mainly because none of them were released in my country. And I had a great experience, from the beginning, right up until the final boss. If you have access to an emulator, or you live in a country where this game was released, I, I say you should check it out. There are rumors going around that Pop and Twinbee may be coming to the Switch's SNES library, but as of the making of this video, nothing's materialized. It could just be a stupid rumor. So if you're looking for a game with a simple concept, with great gameplay, creative characters, wonderful level design, and above all, an amazing soundtrack, I can't recommend Pop and Twinbee enough. And it is hereby the first ever recipient of the Nostalgia Arcade Seal of Approval. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Now, I'm not one to do one of those shameless self-promotion things, but if you really did enjoy this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to be the first to know about new uploads. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Arcade, and I'll see you next time. Well, not literally, but you get it.